Retro Future. Hello everyone, this is Bonsert of Radio Retro Future, and it's been a long time since I did one of these rambling writer's diaries, but here we go. I've got some developments, uh, for example, uh, the manuscript of her second book is done, A Bound for the Sticks. And to celebrate both my birthday and that fact, the Wrench in the Machine, which you can see behind you, is now on a discount on Amazon. A link in the description. So with that, uh, let's get into today's topic. How to commission art uh, when you are a writer. Now, I also hope this is of some use to uh, artists who would like to know, you know, the perspective of a someone who does a commission like this. Now, um, this is basically two parts. First, we're going to talk about like how do you find an artist and then we're going to move into like how do you communicate with artists during the actual process. And if you've got tips, hints, tricks, please put them down in the um, comments in the doobity doo. Yeah. So, with that, uh, let's get started. So, the first thing that you have to do is to essentially well, find an artist. Now, there are two places where I get them, um, like Instagram. I follow a lot of artists on Instagram and when I like one, well, I often just DM them and ask them like, are you open for commissions? And if they say, well, you know, I'm occupied till, I don't know, next year, well, so be it, you know. Make sure you have like a, a, a small pool of artists that you know you can trust. That's also why I started the coloring book project, by the way, which I should have had handy, but I do not. However, if you want to support it, please join us on Kickstarter by following the link down below and uh, follow this project. So when it launches, hopefully before June, before July, I mean, uh, then you'll be notified. And uh, yeah, if you just back it for $1, uh, a backer is a backer. So yes so that that's also by the way why i did the coloring book project to begin with to get to know more artists you know see if they like it see if i, I like them if not for the art just working together with them also should be something you like uh, it should be people you trust uh, and so on but we're going to talk about that later so another place where i found many artists is deviant art now, DeviantArt has a message board and one of them is like writer looks for artist or something like that. And uh, basically you post your commissions there. Like what I said was, well, I'm an author. I write uh, in this and this genre. Uh, it's about this. And I want to create coloring plates based on scenes from the books, short stories. And I, I got over a couple dozen responses, a lot of them. So yeah, I, I had to pick up the litter and you know, uh, some of them included art right away. So it's like, oh, that, that's good, that's good. You know, and also make sure where they can contact you. I'm not wild about the messaging system on DeviantArt. Creators do not, like they have a DeviantArt profile, but they don't look there as often. Same goes for ArtStation, by the way. So yeah, uh, make sure that uh, it's a medium that you use a lot and comfortable with. And also, by the way, if they contact you in a different way than what you specified, you also know they have not read your message. That That's one thing to pay attention to. Like, did they actually read what you wrote? Some will just, you know, copy paste a standard message like, oh, I'm a comic book artist or something. And, you know, this is what I've done. They did not respond to the content of the message. Well, others did like, I, oh, I, you know, I love steampunk. I always wanted to do steampunk, you know. Oh, I, I, I've seen your website. I've seen your stories. I would love to make art for this. So be on the lookout for messages like that. And then there are also artists like I had one artist. He asked for like three ridiculous amounts of the, for the commission and also he would not draw anything other than i don't know a character portrait or something so those also exist i'm like okay well i clearly do want more than just a character portrait uh yeah the prices vary wildly i'm not gonna discuss what i'm paying for my artists right now because they also vary widely um they also on our various skill levels uh very uh, different ways of working 
uh, which I'll show you some examples of later on, make sure you trust the guy. Now, we do have to talk a little bit about payment because this is something that caused me a great headache. Now, I, I'd like to know uh, for certain I'm not having to pay like absorbent amount all of a sudden. Like the art is done, the artist says, yo, okay, it's time to make the payment. And then it's like, oh, it's, it's also, by the way, gonna cost you $300, you know, it, so, something like that. Uh, make sure upfront, like, okay, how much is this particular commission gonna cost me? Some artists put this on the social media, like, oh, I do commissions, you know, for this, I do this, for this, I want this, and for this, I want this. But yeah, th th those are like uh, people who draw things like OCs, you know, original characters as they're called. Also, there's the matter of like some artists, most artists get paid after they've done the artwork. Um, this is pretty common. That's the arrangement I have with my most artists. Like artists I know better like to say, oh, you know, could you pay me up front because, you know, I want to make an investment in art supplies or something. It's so like, okay, sure, no problem. Because I know them, you know, I trust them. But I also have had like artists, you know, first time working and it says, well, you know, I want to be paid up front and, you know, then I negotiate with them. Well, I'll pay you the first half now and the other half later, you know. And that's acceptable for most as well. So, because I had bad experience with this. I had a artist that I paid up front and then I, I, I just stopped hearing from him. And you know, he just didn't respond to messages. And then like, I, I was really getting angry. You know, I, I messaged him to our usual channel, which was Instagram, I think. And it, he just did not respond. I wasn't even sure that he read the messages. And uh, then I emailed him finally, you know, as a final last resort. And then, oh, then he responded. I'm like, oh, sorry, I, I don't read my messages on Instagram anymore. What the hell? Um, yeah, I was, I was furious. I really, I thought he was gonna f rip me off. I really did. Yeah, I'm not gonna work with that artist anymore. Guess what? Uh, which is, uh, you know, unfortunate, but... Um, yeah and with that uh, so you found your artist okay n now what now make sure that you of course communicate like what you do what genre you're in what you're looking for uh, some will only draw superheroes or stuff like that say so, you know, not interested and uh yeah then you move on uh, with that being said let's uh, get into the commissioning process shall we so in this part, we're gonna be discussing like, how do you commission an art? Now, one thing is that you have to be as clear as possible. Let's say I'm inspired by a particular scene in one of my stories. What I'll do then is submit that scene to the artist. Like, okay, this is the idea. And uh, can you make something of this? And he'll say yes or no. And uh, yeah, then the, the, the question is, okay, well, what does the work look like? Now, what I do, what I have here is an Excel sheet. I put everything in an Excel. Um, and the reason for that is first, I put my references and my descriptions, etc., in a Word document. During one of my first commissions, I was talking with a professional. And then I said, well, I want a steampunk character. This is the idea. Uh, and this is the character. Um, except that uh, what happened was he gave me a sketch of the character in a, in a pose uh, with a particular appearance and I was like something was clearly wrong because I had added like the clothes, the fashion, uh, objects, all that stuff. I said you know I wanted to be historical but I didn't want to insult his intelligence like how did he get like it looked like what was it a, a kind of like world of warcraft character the the whole problem with the steampunk label these days it's been so polluted but anyway well i i made some photos uh, reference photos of myself for poses like you know i wanted to be about this and uh, i said oh yeah awesome great he could work with that so he could like, basically trace me i, I assume um, but then again, he came up with, well, a more historically correct character, but it was still very fantastical. I talked about my design philosophy in regard to the association of history in a separate video, so I'm not going to discuss it here. But something was wrong, and then, but I didn't want to insult the intelligence of this guy. And uh, then I sent him this photo, like, you know, it was like, why didn't you show this me to me earlier? And I said, dude, it's in the document. And then he realized... He didn't scroll down far enough. So, yeah. And so that's why I choose Excel. So like all the information of, of a character or building or vehicle is all on one sheet. Um, and it, uh, 
it's also uh, also you have all these tabs down below so uh you can go through everything by subject as you can see i also use reference photos this is older art that had been made like very early con uh, concepts by me this is a, a photo that i photoshop but stuff like this this is some older concept stuff uh, by people again as you can see more uh, photo references of the atmosphere so that that's what i do i have here i have like a overall notes which is kind of like okay this is what i want the world to be i should probably include more of this i mean the more information you include here uh, but as you can see i also put in links uh, to stories that are in the internet of course the logo because yeah that that's something you have to be careful of because i copy paste a lot of this stuff so I don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. So this is uh, about the city of Arcology. Uh, existing work that's already been created by other artists. You can see more stuff about aliens and, and previous artwork. Yeah, I, I'm already rather far advanced in, when it comes to certain subjects that are in the world. Uh, now, characters. Uh, so the, the, they have like, what, what do other characters in this world look like? And uh, here is a character sheet that is, uh, it was handed to me by one artist uh, who does a lot of character uh, concept stuff. Um, you know, and it's like a complete overview of like the race, the gender, class, uh, subclass. I mean, yeah, he makes a lot of concept for D&D for &D characters. So it's very gamified in that regard. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it does, it is all relevant information. Um, I added some of my own columns, like the format. Uh, for example, is it A4? Or is it digital? Is it video screen? Resolution size? Requested images? Not sure what it, it was about. It was probably something very specific. Um, and uh, yeah, also like what what kind of mood do you want a character to be striking uh, in a particular drawing? Here it's not filled in, uh, but you can. Um, also referenced in stories. These are all short stories that are on the internet so they can just look them up if a, if a writer says hey sorry i don't have the time to read all this tell them to use control uh f uh, you know to find and you know just look for the names of the characters and then this has worked with uh, another writer uh i'm sorry another artist where i said you know here's the the manuscript of the book and just use control f to look for the characters that i commissioned and uh, yeah that has worked and, and now he started right reading more of the book by himself so uh, yeah so yeah the, the do pay in mind like um the the available time an artist has in general for a project uh, for this character more character references uh, be specific what they are and what they are for also because this is a larger document because it's all related to the same world and the same types of characters uh, it's a pretty large document so he couldn't open it online so i had to send it to him uh, which is unfortunate because what I like about working in the cloud well, with Google Docs or stuff is that I can modify files on the fly. When I say, well, this reference is not correct or, or, or hey, I found a better reference or a better example. And so I can just swap out images and stuff like that. For example, what I've done here, this is the character of Nier. She is uh, one of the main, well, not really, a, she's a side character, but a very prominent one. Um, you know, be specific as you can. Like every item uh, that the character, uh, every item that the character has, and the the, the the artist will use those. They usually they'll copy them, right? So be specific. Make notes. Like um, for example, uh, I made a little mistake here. Uh, where is it? The inspiration for the overall closing drew her a lot more Scandinavian than I intended as a result. But, you know, that, that is the, how the process goes. I mean, he, he read the characters. This is, again, for a particular thing. So this, these sketches, this, is, this one is by me. Uh, these are dramatic masks from ancient Greece. And, uh, yeah, that finally led into the development of, of this image right here. Um, so I now include it as a permanent reference. Uh, this is a mood board image because it was relevant for the, for the environment. Uh, that is the sticks which is a major element in the uh, culture of arcology. So they need to be right. And you know, again, it's it's the, the whole ruin of the, where arcology is located in is, is like an undersea grotto 
So be sp as specific as possible. I mean, if you want a sword to look a particular way, uh, if you cannot find a reference, make a sketch because everything helps. Everything will smoothen the process. And uh, yeah, you, you don't test your artist's patience, you know, because you know, if you're more trouble than what you're worth, then they won't want to work with you either. Uh, or so I assume. Uh, we've given uh, all the, the artists all the references. Uh, I. Again, I do it in an Excel file. I mean, you can do it in a Word file, but something like what happened to me might happen. Now, I, I do have to say a lot of artists don't know how Excel works. They're artists, they're not working with spreadsheets in their daily life. So I do explain like, hey, down there, there are tabs with more references or, or that are about specific topics. So yeah, do give a, a bit of an instruction there. Uh, this is by Jim Beckman, uh, another Brazilian artist who has done a lot of work for the Association of Ishtar. I think he's with, with us for the longest time. Um, also met him through the YouTube channel, I think. No, wait, I found him on Instagram and then it turned out that he knew about my channel. That's that's what happened. Yeah, he, he made this sketch and uh, eventually that was transformed into this. And again, like I gave him as many references as I possibly could. Now in this particular image, originally the tower back here was supposed to have been the um, Radio Retro Future Tower. However, due to the composition of the image, how it started, I said, you know, let, let's make this tower its own thing. Now it's the, the Tower of Records, which is also mentioned in the upcoming book. Uh, so it's, uh, that that kind of like came out of that process of making this image, really. Um, and yeah, this will also be included in the coloring book, by the way. Um, yeah, and uh, we've got some uh, some Easter eggs, the dodos here, uh, which I wanted in. We've got uh, some of the mushrooms growing there. And yeah, you know, it also it's difficult to really visualize like what does the, the grotto of arcology look like? Yeah, we, we basically went from, from sketch to sketch, regularly added new things and told me like, okay, this is process now, what do you think? You know, and this is also how we came to the idea, let's just scrap the Radio Retro Future Tower, let's make the tower its own thing. Uh, we added new things like, um, I don't know if you can see it, can I, can I zoom in a bit? Yeah, there we go. You can see like there's now mushrooms on our hood. Uh, the scabs can see each other in the dark when they go inside the tunnels. Another one also by Jim. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. Uh, awesome pose. Uh, what, what he did here uh, for this one is essentially uh, he made a bunch of sketches. Uh, oh wait, this is the archaeology image. Well, anyway, he basically made a bunch of very, very rough sketches. One, two, which ones do you like the most? I asked some people in the community as well. Hey guys, how do you like it? This is something that I also have asked uh, at some time uh, from uh, various artists, you know, make some rough sketches of poses. What do you think would look cool? And uh, finally we chose number four. Uh, what's fun about this approach to it, not only can like the artist play a little bit with uh, with poses and, and, and angles and stuff like that. One other one he did regarding this image you now contained some some examples were like, ooh, ooh, that that's that's a good one. But you know, you have to pick one uh, because my commissions cost money. Uh, artists don't live on nuts and, ber nuts and berries or someone told at least. So uh, yeah, I had to make choices, but uh, I still have the sketches somewhere for future reference. So I can say, well, you know, or, or maybe I can do it for another drawing with different characters. There are multiple benefits uh, to it and it can actually lead to future commissions like, oh, I really like this, 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 this particular layout. So can you give that to me? And yeah, I, I, I love this one. You know, if you're not happy with the ones, you can like kind of like mix and match. Like I want a little bit of number five and a number, little bit of number 10, for example. It's it's less work than having to do uh, like a whole scene over because you just don't like the angle. Like I had one, Thornov, uh, one of the earlier artists on the series. And uh, let's see, where, where is it? Yeah, he, uh, also, made some sketches this is uh the white airship hello everyone bonsard here again i just recall during the making of the image uh that's on screen that i had a lot of trouble finding the proper angle of the airship to solve that issue 
I used this program, which is Des3D. It's a freeware uh, software. However, you pay for many of the um, the stuff that appears in here. There are also some animation features. However, uh, you have to read the uh, license agreement properly if you're allowed to use it for your own stuff, just like that. There, there are some caveats there. When figuring out the angle, what I wanted the ship to appear in, uh, and also uh, what it looked like compared to the environment. I use Des3D. Um, so essentially the uh, artist in question could like copy the perspective. Uh, so yeah, um, I could make a whole video on, on Des3D and what all the possibilities are, etc, etc. Uh, you can just use assets like this, uh, like this airship over here, that roof over there with the piping to basically create a perspective image you know just for the perspective not to uh, copy the assets entirely and you can like include human figures in there as well uh, I, I had one of those but i can't find it anymore that way you can like create depth perspective angles and and stuff like that we're sure i mean i love this one this one he 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 hit, he hit right out of the park this one is great um you know it's also a good moment to say well i want this there i want this there i want this done differently i want these details to be different here's also another one this is for a comic book page um I'll, I'll talk about that more in the future i hope many men uh, we're gonna discuss like how do you write a comic script i got many compliments even though i only wrote one up to this point and i got response like oh this is one of the best ones i've ever seen so you describe everything per panel. The red bits are are my comments. Like, oh, I want this top hat to be, you know, I, it looks like a, a trilby or, or a cowboy hat. I said, I want this to be a top hat. You know, this, these are fine. I said, well, you know, I, I want uh, there to be a, a block here. And, uh, you know, I, I want this, you know, I wasn't, I didn't like the shoulder, um, you know. All that stuff, you know, the more that you do, the better you get. Do I have another example of this? Another one, this is by uh, Eldon Crowder. Now, this is one of those artists, like, he is... He has done so much professional work, you know. Um, this is the kind of guy that you hire because he has done work that you like. You just let him go, you know. You, you don't bother with them. Uh, I mean, look at the detail. Uh, I said, well, you know, I want a kind of like a pin-up thing. To her to wear like Victorian style underwear. A uh, little bit of risky. Uh, not that much. This is, I, uh, this is a difficult image, by the way. I, I had struggled so much to find proper references and proper pin-up examples to get this right. But yeah, it turned out into this. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a bonus image in the upcoming uh, coloring book. By the way, it was intended to be the coloring for the coloring book, but uh, as you can see, he, he, he got carried away with the black. Um, I mean, still amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm still very proud to own it. So, uh, yeah, I should probably get it printed out or something. I mean, it still looks bloody amazing. What else do we have? Another example of another artist. He made four, like, fighting poses. Yeah, at this stage, it's also amazing. You know, I really get hyped when I see this stuff. So I think uh, we eventually combined four and one, I think. Um, so, yeah, no, well, it was, uh, we chose one. Uh, do I have it? Uh, I do actually have it. It's, uh, it's right over here. This looks amazing, amazing coloring ground. So if you like this, by the way, all this art that I'm showing now, it's all black and white because it's for the coloring book. So if you want, uh, go follow us on Kickstarter and uh, yeah, please support it. Even if you will just support it for like uh, $1 or something, uh, folks, uh, it's still a backer. So uh, if you are if you want to support something, just, just give a dollar. Uh, a backer is a backer, you know? So, yeah, and I, I hope to start this before the end of July. And, uh, yeah, I, I got some bonus art as well that I earned. So, yeah, I, I've got some amazing artists. I had finding ways to cooperate with artists is so amazing. Also, this drawing. Oh, man. A kid. A wonderful detailed drawing. And, again, I just gave him so many references for the prosthetics. Like, oh, these are all... I, I, I gave him, like, this sheet with, with filled with Victorian prosthetics. And I'm like, oh, well, pick one, you know. And one thing you also got to realize when you're working on this is just the amount 
of objects you have to think about. Like, you know, I was so focused on the prosthetics when coming up with this, this commission. You know, I was like, okay, well, what about the chair, you know? And so I, I then looked up all manner of chairs, dentist chairs, stuff like that. Then he incorporated it. And again, it, it really depends. Some uh, artists will ask you for a lot of feedback and others, they're just like, well, here it is. It's done. It's like, and you're, you're just blown away. Uh, it really, really depends. And um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, also, I love the, 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 the teapot there. Uh, some people argue, well, actually, there's too much detail. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I love the drawing regardless. And uh, one other artist that I work with, uh, Cyberwolf, also uh, partly colored it for the Kickstarter promotion. I like, have an idea what it will look like when you uh, start working on it. And I, I hope you're you're getting hyped by seeing this. Uh, also, again, character reference. I, I think uh, this character is loosely based on Lemmy from Motorhead. Because I, I just kind of like imagined the repair guy. Like I, What I did for this particular scene is that I wrote a very rough draft of a scene. And like Kind of like how I imagined the character to be and what they are and then I showed it to him and you know it's like oh okay and, you know and uh, yeah so it, it helps I cannot stress enough folks you know instead of writing books filled with background on your world and how awesome it is you know just write a scene just write a scene, you know, and then you will realize what you need, what truly need in a world. Do I have some other stuff that I can share with you? Uh, because I, I, I hope uh, this is helpful. Regardless, he made like all these concepts. And uh, yeah, then I gave feedback on it. Like, you know, this is, uh, you know, how webbing should look like. Uh, I don't like the pauldron. Uh, oh, this character, could you like base a little bit on the guy from the big, uh, Mr. Brown from the big combo? You know, uh, well, I, I want uh, near instead of this, uh, where uh, a T. So that is what it would look like with her, I, I don't know, garden overalls, I think they're called. So yeah, you know, height difference, you made that. You know, it will be clear, you know, and, and, and then there's a lot of back and forth. And yeah, this, this is different for every, every artist. Every artist gathers information from you in a different way. Yeah, I, I also like every, every, for every art I invest in, I need to make it back, which in the current state of my development is it's, much more of an investment um so yeah go buy my book uh now it's on discount so i'm not making much of it but hey tell your friends uh no i think that's pretty much it i mean do be fair with artists i mean you are their employer you are allowed to ask for specifics i mean you know don't be unreasonable for example uh, like in the in, in this example i'm like okay uh, this is not turning out the way I had hoped. Um, you know, let's just make it something else. But yeah, it's a collaborative process. Writing in general, I think that's something that you need to keep in mind. Um, and uh, yeah, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm gonna keep it at this because I've been rambling on for a long time now. So with that being said, the wrench in the machine, Currently on discount on Amazon. If you want just a taste of my writing, go read or short stories on the association of Ishtar.com. I hope you're looking forward to Bound for the Sticks. And um, yeah, of course, please support our Kickstarter, you know, um, even if it's just for $1 or just a follow. Really, at this stage, it's still in the pre-launch. And uh, I'll, I'll try and make more content like this if you enjoy. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, as always, make things your way. Goodbye.